Good afternoon, and thank you. Thank you for joining the session. Yeah, this is Ian. I'm from IBM. I work for the Bluemix All Scaling Service for several years, and now I'm a contributor for the Cloud Foundry App All Scaler project as well. Yeah, today I will cover two aspects. Uh, the first aspect is uh, from the end user point of view, how to understand all scaling, how to use all scaling service to serve for your application. And the second aspect is uh, from the service provider point of view, how to deploy or scaler, how to add or scaler to your self uh, deployment, and how to enable the service. Yeah. Uh, first of all, yeah, all scaling is used to help to manage your application uh, capacity. With or without all scaling, your op uh, application operation will be a little different. But anyway, um, as a prerequisite, uh, before, without all scaling or with all scaling, both, uh, in both situations, you need to understand your performance benchmark of your application. You need to know your workload type. You need to your, understand your peak hour. You need to know when the workload is uh, beyond your expectation and will introduce an, uh, some performance problem. And without all scaling, you need to do the monitoring yourself, maybe have some monitoring tools, and you need to set some alerts. And once the alert is triggered, you need to do the CF scale command manually, and then, when, and then you need to keep monitoring. And with all scaling, you just need to create a service instance, and then create a scaling policy, bind the service to your application and attach the policy. Then all scaling will do everything for you. And um, here, I want to mention, uh, when we talk about the scale, we are talking about scale in or scale out. That means add or remove your application instance numbers. We didn't touch about scale up, or uh, that means um, add more memory quotas to your application. Yeah, since in CF, if you want to change your memory quota of your application, you, uh, you need to shut down the current container and uh, create a new. Yeah, then this will introduce some downtime so, so that all scale won't touch that area. Um, yeah. So in here, maybe uh, create service, span service, you are all familiar with that, but you don't know how to define the scaling policy. That is what I want to talk about. Um, here we have two types of uh, scaling. The traditional one is uh, dynamic scaling. And here I show a um, simulated workload uh, for the throughput over 12 hours. And this, in, in this workload chart, you can see the workload is, by, uh, is, fact, sorry, it is fractal treated. It's up and down. And, but in general, you can see uh, in general, the average value will increase at the beginning and then down at the end uh, near the 4 p.m. Um, and according to your, your understanding for the application, you define two performance benchmarks. One is upper threshold and the other is lower threshold. And the green area is pretty fun. And the yellow area, yeah, is uh, acceptable. It's normal. Uh, it, it's acceptable. It, it, we can serve it pretty fun. And the red area is pretty dangerous. And we hope to add more instance to serve the red area uh, better. And we hope to reduce the instance numbers when it became green again. Um, but you, you, as, you, as you notice, the, the workload is frustrated. Do you expect the all scatter to be quite sensitive with the spike? I think no, yeah? If, if we are quite sensitive to with the, the each spike, your instance number will be frustrated as well. So how all scatter do that? Yeah, in fact, we are smoothing your, uh, your sorry, we are smoothing the metric values with the stat window. We will collect all these metrics numbers during this window and do an average. And if the average value breach the upper threshold, we will count it. You are breached now. And then we move the step window a little bit and do, an, 
do another average again and to see whether it is continued to bridge. If the bridge is lasting for long enough, we will think, oh, okay, it's time to trigger scale out. You need to add, your, add, your, add more instance to your application. And this is the result. After all scaling, this is a simulated workload per instance. On uh, each instance, for example, uh, the, in, this, in, this, uh, in, the, in the middle area, in the half, you can see the workload is almost a half compared to previous chart. And in this area, in the near to 4 p.m., you can see the number is quite similar to a previous, uh, previous chart. Why? Yeah, since in this area, we scale out to more instance. And then we scale in again. Yeah. Currently, we have four, we, we support four metrics, different metric types, memory use, memory utilization, throughput, and response time. Uh, here, I just want to mention the utilization is the percentage of your memory used. And besides dynamic scaling, we also support the schedule scaling. Uh, you can define different schedules. The schedules means a time duration. Uh, you can define recurring schedule by day of week or day of month. And also, you can define the specific day schedule. And you can, and one, you can define multiple schedules here. And if the schedule has some conflict, for example, uh, if uh, for example, if you define every weekend you, you need more workload, but uh, also you define in, on the Christmas Eve, you need higher capacities, then the specific date schedule will overlap the recurring schedule since it is more particular specification. And also, the, the, the schedule scaling is not conflict with dynamic scaling. When the schedule is taken effective, the dynamic scaling is also help you to change your application in capacities dynamically, automatically. Here we have some um, I have a chart. Uh, um, in when you define schedule, you need to define a minimal instance number, max instance number. This this true value is quite useful. It prevents the unlimited scaling. Otherwise, you need to, you, you, your, maybe your, scale, your instant number will keep growing up, yeah. And there is a special one, initial minimal instance account. Uh, that means, um, let me take an example. For example, before the schedule take effective, you only have 30 instances. Then, and, and you define the minimal instance, uh, minimal instance, initial minimal instance to 40. Then when the schedule takes effect, autoscaler will help you to change your instance uh, number from 30 to 40 directly. Yeah, but if, if you, but if before the schedule takes effect, you already have 15, 50, sorry, 50. 50 is greater than 40, then autoscaler won't change it anymore. It just ensure when the schedule uh, at the beginning, you have enough capacity to handle the more workload. Okay. So yeah, current here it is the our policy definition. Um, it should be a JSON file. I extract some table here just to make sure it is pretty to understand clearly, and. Here in the JSON definition, you need to, first of all, you need to define the minimal instance account, max instance account, and the scaling rules. This works as default. And then you can optional define the schedules. And in the schedule, you define the time zone and define the recurring schedule and specific day schedule as a table here. Um, and for the scaling rules, um, you can see there are some numbers here and operators here. I can translate it into native language so that it, it could be easy to understand. For example, the second row. Um, that means you will check the throughput at the metric type. You, you, will, uh, you will focus on the throughput. And you will take average uh, 
sorry, you will take the average number of your throughput every five minutes and to see whether it is greater than the 15,000. If it is greater than 15,000, it, it is a bridge. Then if the bridge continue for 10 minutes, then it's time to add more instance, add one instance. And after the scale out is done, you have a period of cooldown, that is waiting time, that provides a chance for you uh, to keep your system stabilized. No more scaling out action will happen during these five minutes, during the cooldown. Yeah. Okay, and then well, after we already have a policy, we can attach the policy. We have several ways to do it. First of all, you create a service, and then you bind the service with a parameter. You can define the policy file name as a parameter. Um, Another way to do that is through our public API. You can do a curl, uh, you can do a CUI uh, command to uh, attach your policy with a put. Here I just want to mention that the authorization code here, you must use your CF user token. After you log in, use a CF OAuth token command, you can get your user token. P put it as a, your authorization code when you access our public API. And we have, another, we have the other operation available on public API, retrieval policy, update policy, delete policy, and retrieval metrics, and retrieval the histories. Anyway, it is not quite flexible to use the APIs. Uh, it will come in soon. We will develop our command lines. Our, uh, the altogether command line will work as a Cloud Foundry plugin, the command plugin. So we will, all the, all the operations for policy, for metrics and history will be supported in the uh, command line. Okay, and here I list some steps to implement authgating. I don't need to go through all these steps here, but I just want to mention pre, as a pre-request, you need to enter your, your application before enable authgating. You need to know the workload tab, you need to you know the benchmark. You need to know how to define the upper threshold, lower threshold. You need to know how to define the schedule if it, if it is applicationable. Okay. Yeah, that is. And then this is a deep dive to AllScatter. First of all, we, de we discuss how to deploy AllScatter. Currently, we have a Bosch release you can download from the gate, and we can do the Bosch deploy. Um, both, of, both of the Bosch V1 manifest and Bosch V2 manifest is, is supported. And also we can deploy using the self deployment approach. Yeah, if you are working on uh, Bosch Lite, you can use a self deployment, it is very quick. And, and then after you deploy it, you can enable it. You can enable or scaling service. I have a short demo to include all these steps. Sorry, wait a minute. Here. Okay. Here I just recorded it on my laptop, so it is using self deploy to, um, you, you need to create release Upload release, and then use Bosch. Here, the Bosch command me, means the Bosch V2 command line. And in in this batch of my deployment, the API server and service broker will be updated. It it did take time, so when I do the recording, I speed up so that you it won't take a long time for all of you. So, but anyway, it is quite easy. You only need three commands to steps to enable it. Now the Bosch deployment is finished. And then we can create service broker. Here we open, we, we, re, we register our open all scalar endpoint on router. So you can access it by open all scalar uh, 
and then you can enable through success. Now here it is. Then the service binding. First of all, you create a service. And I already have an application here. And I already have my policy defined here. So I just bind it, bind the service with my application. And then I can retrieve my application from within, with the API server. It is, uh, the endpoint is allscaler.boshlight.com. And then here it is uh, policy. As we just talked about, yeah. Okay, go back to. Okay. Then next, I want to go through the roughly architecture diagram of Open Um We have two endpoint. Uh, and, uh, sorry, we have two entries for end user. The first entry is to create and ban service from the CLI through the open uh, through the service broker API. And another is using the API server to do the policy metric and history operations. Once the application is banned and once the policy is defined, the metric collector on this way, the metric collector will starting to fetch the container metrics from log aggregator. It will fetch the uh, memory, and it will fetch the all the uh, sorry the all the HTTP request numbers and we and response times, and we will we will do aggregation for this scaling for, for this metrics the raw data as a scaling metric. And the aggregation part will do the average. Yeah, if you still remember the stat window, we will, we will do the average. And the event gen part, the event generator will check the average value with the threshold and to try to uh, bridge a scaling event. The scaling event, uh, and then the event will be sent to scaling engine. The engine will check whether the event could be handled right now. Uh, there are some situations that the event will, will be ignored. For example, if the minimal instance, for example, if you want to scale out, but the max instance account is reached, then the scaling engine will stop to serve the event, yeah, since you already have the maximum number. And, or if you are during the cooldown time, the scaling engine will stop, will ignore the event as well, yeah, since as you define, you, you need to wait a while for before another scaling. And also we have a scheduler. The scheduler will trigger a scheduled scaling event to scaling engine. All these data are saved in Postgres database. And maybe we and we have planned to add more database support in the future, but currently it is Postgres. Um, and all scaler has been deployed on the SAP cloud in July this year, so I shift. Okay, thank you. Okay, my name is Pradyut. I am responsible for, apart from everything else, to make sure that Autoscaler runs fine on, on the SAP Cloud Platform. So, I mean, a lot of people have questions about whether it's production ready. For example, we've been doing uh, uh, development on this for the last uh, more than a year and a half, or almost a year and a half, and uh, and yes, the answer to that is yes, it is production ready. We already have this deployed on the SAP Cloud Platform since uh, since June uh, this year. It's currently available as a beta uh, a beta service, uh, so which means no SLEs yet. Uh, but yeah, there have been we have ramp up customers, internal customers who have been who have been using it for a variety of uh, of use cases. We have very positive feedback on that. Uh, for the multi-cloud strategy that we have in SAP, so in, in that context, we have this service deployed on AWS, Azure, on and OpenStack. GCP is coming up on in the future, so which means uh, which means we'll have it available for basically customers everywhere. Uh, performance tests, another question that we have all the time as to what can we what can we support. So so we are currently running tests uh, as a beta service it is uh, to support uh, to be able to support at least uh, 2K to 3K apps. The tests are currently in progress. It is positive. 
And once uh, these tests are done, uh, we will probably have a, have a final release uh, up on GitHub so that, uh, so that people or platform operators can actually download and use it. So, 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 so that's going pretty fine as well. And, and with that final release, we will also go GA on the, on the, on the, on the platform, on the SAP Cloud platform. Yeah, that's, that's a short update from, from my side. Yeah? Um, VMware platform, no, I, I don't have any updates on, on that yet. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah? Um, maybe we discuss that on the next slide. We have a slide for that? Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, I didn't put a slide to for the future, for, for the coming soon fe uh, features, but I, I, I can do some summary here. Uh, first of all, yeah, just as I mentioned, in the future we will deliver the CLI support. And also if we will, we will to uh, output our performance benchmark and do some scalability upgrade. And also we will consider to add CPU metric back to our, into our support metric, the metric type. And as you mentioned, we will consider to support the customer metric. That means your application can define your, per, your own metric and report it. And then all scaler will do the all scaling actions according to your Customer metrics, and um, also we will co we will consider to change the deployment approach. Uh, we may we may deliver approach to deploy or scale itself as Cloud Foundry apps, not not only related uh, limited to both release. Yeah, that is our future plan. Yeah. Just to add to that, for regarding the question about custom metrics, so the session that we had before this about sidecars. So that is the concept that we're going to leverage to pull metrics out of those containers so that services like Autoscaler and others who, who need those metrics for building use cases can be, can be developed. So kind of a dependency on, on that. Any other questions? <coughs> yeah, sure. Um, at the moment, hang on, hang on. quite a lot. It's a very important person recording your uh, magical voice. Try that. Uh, yeah. Um, at the moment, you have quite a lot of moving parts um, to the autoscaler, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if there's plans to kind of reduce that or keep it with lots of moving parts over the long term. Kill the microservices. Um, I, I, to give more detail, yeah, there, there's currently lots of moving parts, um, and it gives us quite a lot of flexibility. Um, in terms of uh, being able to have multiple different metrics collectors and so on. Um, I think over time we would like to reduce some of the number of those parts. Um, part of the custom metrics thing we were talking about is it would be nice if all the things just came from Logregator, mm -hmm. for example, um, and then you wouldn't need that flexibility. Everything would just be reading from Logregator to get everything. Mm -hmm. um, so over time we would hope to do that, uh, but at the moment I guess if you like microservices, we've got a few of them. You heard it first, less micro, less plural. Big, big service one. Hey, uh, tomorrow during the keynote, one of our team members actually yeah. complained that the odd scale does <laughs> not respect open connections. So, is that true? You want to Yeah, you want It's Diego's fault. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's Diego's fault. Uh, we have a no-blame culture. Um, so so the, the, the problem is a valid problem, right? Like, uh, when you auto-scale stuff in the platform today, uh, that means when you scale down, you get less instances, and the instances get stopped. Um, and at the moment, that doesn't coordinate with in-flight requests. Um, that's actually not really auto-scaling. That's a generic problem. Um, that we don't have coordination with the router as we're shutting down instances. Um, so if you went to the, the Diego update earlier, you would have seen that one of the big items that Diego is now working on is zero downtime deploys and blue-green deploys. So it's really those features in the platform that would stop auto-scaling having this edge case. So I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it is a valid problem with auto-scaling right now, 
but the solution is going to be in Diego. I mean, if, if your app has long-running requests as a feature, you run the risk of, right. of being yeah. upset because right. it's, it's a so cloud. The current behavior is you get a, ter a term request and you get a few seconds to shut down. So normally, if your process is well behaved, that should be okay. Uh, but yeah, if you've got long-running in-flight requests, then currently that's just a, a general thing that we don't handle great. Pick, pick another ecosystem, the Heroku platform, uh, restarts every container every 24 hours regardless of mm. what you think you might be doing with it. Uh, in part to stop this idea that, that containers have a long life that you should be able to trust. Uh, just to add that again, so if, you're, if, you're, if your application is doing a lot of background jobs or probably it is not restful, yeah, I mean, it's like if you, if you don't use autoscaler but just do a CF scale down, you're going to, you're going to face the same problem. So yeah. it's really not an autoscaler issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.